Thank you for being here. Tom is a great friend of mine, a um, great colleague of mine. He is a professor of saxophone, and he also teaches music theory at uh, Valencia College. Uh, Tom is a very well-known scholar. He actually played in 46 countries as, as, as a history goes, something like that. And, and when I asked Tom to list them at one of our events that we played together, he said, oh, sure. And he started listing them, and I lost him after 30-something countries. <laughs> yes, it took a while. Uh, so anyway, now, um, Tom is, um, Tom wrote a graduate paper when uh, he was going to graduate school on Gershwin's song, I Got Ridden, and on the influence that the song had on the history of jazz and how different jazz musicians used that song. So I'd, I'd like to see, Tom, if, if you could tell us a little bit more about the song, and then, of course, we'll, sure. we'll play it and talk about all these different influences. Sure. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you to uh, everyone here at Orange TV for having me. Um, the tune, I Got Rhythm, was originally written in 1928 by George and Ira Gershwin for a show that was called Treasure Girl. Uh, now, if you know anything about Broadway shows, not all of them succeed. This particular show only ran for 68 performances, which is roughly about eight weeks or two months before the show closed. Uh, with that in mind, composers such as George and Ira were never above taking an old piece of music from a show that did not perform, reworking it, perhaps putting it in a different key for a different singer, changing the tempo, uh, and putting it into a new piece of music or a new piece of uh, Broadway production. So two years later, George and Ira had an enormous hit with a show called Girl Crazy in 1930, and they found an unknown singer who became a Broadway star over the next few decades. Her name was Ethel Merman. She had a very powerful voice, and her featured song in Girl Crazy 1930 was I Got Rhythm. So I decided in grad school to write a paper on I Got Rhythm, uh, simply because this song became what's called contrafacted. And I, I should give you a definition of the term contrafact. In the 1920s, in the 1930s, record companies had artists like George and Ira Gershwin under contract. So they were telling them to write music all the time. The problem was, if they recorded this music for sale so the record company could make some money and pay their artists, uh, if they played something that somebody else had previously written for a different record company, this record company had to pay that record company. And they wanted to avoid that. So in order to avoid paying royalties to other record companies and other artists, uh, the record producers and the, and the uh, presidents of these companies would tell their artists, go ahead and take the harmonic material from somebody else's song and write your own melody. Because you can't copyright a chord progression, you can copyright the melody. So the art of taking a previously written song, the harmony of it, maybe tweaking it a little tiny bit and adding your own completely different melody is called writing a contrafact. George and Ira Gershwin's 1930 composition, 1928 composition, um, I Got Rhythm, became the most contrafacted song of the 20th century. And if you ask jazz musicians, talking about very popular contrafacts as well as some lesser known ones, the jazz world is replete with almost 70 different well-known recordings of tunes that are contrafacted. Some are in different keys, some are in different tempos, some have different bridges completely, and that's a, a section of the, the piece of music. Uh, we should talk very briefly about uh, scale degree, because uh, this is just to, to give you a little bit of theory, uh, which will explain the form of the song. The song I Got Rhythm has four sections, really two sections. One is called an A section, one is called a B section. They are two harmonically different sections. The A section starts on step one of the key that we're in. In this case, it's B flat major. So if you build a chord, a 1-3-5 chord, on, on the one chord of B flat, you're starting with B flat and D and F, and you're playing a one chord. If you play a two chord, it starts on C. Three starts on D. Four chord starts on E flat. Five chord on F. Six chord on G. Seven chord on A natural. And then we're back to one or eight. So when you hear us talking about doing uh, chord progressions such as one, six, two, five. Three, six, two, five. One as a dominant. Four. Diminished up a half step of four. Three, six, two, five. And then we get back to one. That's what the A section does on this song. And we'll do the A section twice. So we'll play those eight bars twice with a melody that George wrote that's based on a pentatonic scale. Then we'll play the bridge, which is the only harmonically different section. This is also eight bars long. It's four pairs of chords, each 
two bars is a dominant seventh chord. We go up a major third from the key of B flat to the key of D. We make that a dominant chord, D7, for two bars. And it resolves down a fifth to G7 for two bars, which resolves down a fifth to C7, which for two bars resolves down a fifth to B F7, which takes us back home to our original one, six, two, five, and we're through the form again. Now, composers like to take this last A section every now and then and put a little extension on it. So you'll actually hear an eight bar A section, an eight bar A section, an eight bar bridge, and a 10 bar last A section. It's really the first eight bars of the A section with a little stretch and extension on it. So the original song, I Got Rhythm, in B flat, as written by George and Ira in 1928 and reworked in 1930 for Ethel Merman, sounds like this. One, two, uh, uh, uh. This was the tune that would become so enamored of other players who enjoyed putting variations on the A section, variations on the B section, that George himself in New York in 1930, after writing this, would go into the clubs late night, as, as Sir Gay mentioned earlier, and he would hear jazz musicians who played Broadway shows, who heard this music, and at this point it was being played on the radio, and it was becoming a, star, a hit for Louis Armstrong, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, obviously Ethel Merman, and a number of other instrumentalists who loved this tune. And he would hear them playing the song at night, changing and putting variations on it. In 19...